G'day folks, Rod Moore here from Learn to Paint TV and Learn to Paint Academy. Welcome to this week's episode of Learn to Paint TV. This week we're going to do a nice little river scene with a couple of boats and we'll be using the water mixable oil paints and I'll walk you through those. But if you're using acrylics, then you can do uh, this painting just by following the exact same process that we're going to do in this episode here today. So it should be a bit of fun. Let me show you the photo. This is a photo that I took down at Noosa River. And we've got a couple of nice little boats there. We won't put that third boat in, but the two in the front absolutely will put in. And I'm going to eliminate the buildings on the far river embankment. I don't particularly like those. So we'll just turn that into a little row of trees um, on the other side of the river there. So it should make for a really good little project. And uh, we're going to follow the more method of painting as always. Three steps, three colors, three brushes. Simplify it right down so that anybody can follow along. We only use a couple of brushes, okay, to keep it simple. So we've got um, these larger hog hair bristle brushes, okay. So I have a couple of each size. So I've got a couple of large ones, and then I've got, it looks like I've got three medium size and two smaller ones, right? And then a little rigger brush for a bit of detail work. Our palette, again, we keep the palette really simple. We're gonna basically use the three primary colors here, French ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, or permanent alizarin crimson, and yellow ochre. That's gonna make up 80 to 90% of this painting with some titanium white. And I'm utilizing today a 12 inch by 16 inch um, board, prepared board. So I've prepared that board using gesso. It's an MDF board. And if you don't know how to prepare boards, look out for one of our videos. It's an art studio chat video where I talk about how to prepare the boards. So I'm just going to dip into some water. I'm going to take some of this French ultramarine blue here and a little bit of this alizarin crimson. That'll give us a nice dark. That'll be our starting point for our drawing. So this is step one now, getting our drawing in. Okay, now we talked about having big shapes. So the first big shape is this river embankment here, and that's going to run from around about there, and it dips down, and then it sort of comes back up there. There's a little bit of a tree on that embankment there. I'll pop that in. Distant embankment here, okay. So that's the bottom of it there, and we're going to run up a row of trees. I'll get a little bit bigger in the middle there. Make it random. Don't make that sort of an even... Um, line but that's another shape there and at this stage of the process we're not trying to paint masterpieces we're just simply trying to just get our big shapes into the right place the the little boats there we need to take just a touch more time and care with so uh, boats can be tricky I struggle with them sometimes as well but what we're going to do is just do our best effort so don't worry if you haven't got the boat shapes perfect um, no one's going to look at the photo and compare afterwards okay so just do your best effort with it there's our reflection there and that's look isn't that all we can ask is that we give it our best go and every painting becomes a learning opportunity and i really think that's the key is to treat each painting as you know what can i learn from this painting and that way it's just one big constant state of learning and i think that's a good good place to be okay little shape like that it's close enough as i said don't try and replicate it perfectly uh well you can if you want but you know don't don't agonize over it don't get caught into beating yourself up if you haven't quite got the shape of the boat perfect okay and um, really what we want to do is just indicate these shapes here It's going to go something like that. A little bit tricky. Um, just take your time with it. And again, don't get too caught up in getting it perfect. I always believe that having a go 
and getting it as close as you can is preferable to um, you know quitting because you haven't got the shape right or getting frustrated or upset even though it's not easy to not get frustrated and upset um, but at least you've had a go you know and you've if you don't get it perfect the first time maybe get your sketch pad out and do some sketches of it with step two here my starting point is going to be getting these distant trees in and this distant embankment then we'll come in and do uh, the foreground embankment and the water and then we'll go back to the sky we'll leave the boats to step three so we just want to get in those major shapes so i'm going to take a larger brush here now i'm going to pop it in some water and we are going to take some of this blue mix it into the dark we've already got there a little bit more of that red and what we want these these trees are over on the other side of the river so i want to get just a pinhead of yellow into that mix that third primary color and what what that'll do is just gray that back a bit i'll take some white into there and we want a bluey gray which look i think we might have that there i've got a fair bit of water in there but that's pretty close to what we want so let's just block this in now just treat this as all one mass but the important point here is that we get pleasant edges along the top this is how we create like a mass of trees don't worry too much about what's happening in the middle of them just block it all in all the shadow okay and there's a fair bit of water in my brush so same process with acrylics is, you know keep this reasonably thin so it dries out before we go on to the next step now for this one over here it's a little bit further in distance from uh this one we've just done so let's go down to the palette here and what I'll do is I need to, because it's further away, I need to just cool that tone down. So I'll add blue into that mix. Okay, and then I'll take a little bit more white. Okay. And I just want a subtle shift. I don't want a big jump. Best thing to do when you, when you create a new mix of tone like that is to then come up next to the one you've already got and just test it. Is it cooler? Is it grayer? Is it lighter in value? And I think the answer to that is yes. Good job, Rod. We've done well. So we'll just now mask that in as well. Less detail. So I've got lots of little intricate little things happening here. This is further away. So therefore, we don't want as much detail. Details pull the eye to it. Okay, so I'm just going to go back into a dark. I've got no water in the brush now, so it's quite thick, that paint. Okay. Do I need yellow? Probably not. We'll just, yeah, I will go yellow because I don't want to get it too purple. Okay, so that third tone, because blue and red obviously make a purple, right? And make a dark purple. When you add the third primary in, it starts to move it towards the dark. That'll push it towards the dark. But the beauty of being able to mix your own dark like that, and that's almost black, right? The beauty of being able to mix your own dark is that you can then push that dark cooler or warmer, depending on what the subject needs. Okay, I'll get my yellow ochre here. I'll get it. May as well take that white. Just cut off a bit of the white there. Probably still a little bit too dark for sand. There we go, that's probably better. Okay, so that sand is going to run through here. And I'll just add some blue into that. Let's have a closer look at that. Okay, and we'll start to get up a bluey green. Pop just a little bit of the cadmium yellow, just a little pinhead of it in there. And let's just try that. A little bit light. I could try and add a bit of dark. A bit more blue to darken it here and there. Now as I come into here, I'll get a little bit darker again. So I'll add... A little bit more blue into that mix. Now 
Now, this water over here is a light blue until it gets to about there, and then it shifts into a dark green. Take this white here, take this blue. I'll just give you a close-up of what we're mixing. Okay, over here. It's white and blue. It needs to be a, a light blue. Like so. It will darken it as it comes closer towards us. So I'll get a little, you need a little bit of water in this just to thin it back a bit. That'll make it possible for us to be able to work back over it um, in a bit in a moment's time. Or you know when we do step three. So for now I'm just going to just drag that in. Notice I'm using the big brush. If I pop that there, you can see that's just a little bit darker as we've come around the corner. More of this darker blue. Even though it's quite close to the sandy embankment there, it's a little bit of depth into this water. Hence the reason why the boats are able to anchor there. Pop it into the shadows. Just a few little hints of it there. Now we'll come into that green, that dark green. So we can just utilize the green we were already working on. More of the ultramarine blue. More yellow ochre, let's just see how that works. Now notice because I'm only using three colors here, that we're getting great color harmony. Okay, that's the reason why I teach beginners at the Learn to Paint Academy, to keep their palette really simple when they're starting out, okay? As you get more advanced, you add more colors, as you'll see on my palette I've got. Um, but in the early days, when you're starting out, keep it really simple and learn how to mix those colors. And then I can soften that in. But I don't want to pull too much of that light blue um, across into that dark green. All right, so to get that sky in, I'll go to a medium sized brush. This one here. Okay, it's exactly the same brush as we've been using. So again, I'll take the titanium white. Good chunk of that. You can see there's a little bit of yellow in there, but who cares? You know, it'll just give us a little bit of a shift in tone. Now, that's just a little bit too dark. Okay, we need to lighten that value. Remember, if you're using acrylics, remember your acrylics are going to dry tone darker. Yeah, so if I can avoid coming back into the sky in step three, then I do. Um, just so we can focus then on the focal point and so on. So what we want to do here is get this in. You can see that I think that's still a little bit too dark. So that's why I'm starting at the top, right? Because I sense that it was probably a little bit too dark. I'll start it at the top and then I can come in and I can take another swipe. I'll show you how much I'm putting in. Okay, another swipe of the white there into that mix, lighten it back. Okay, like so. And then I can come into these lower parts. And what I'll do, I'll just paint up to the darker part. 
a little bit of delicate work coming around the tops of these trees. So just take your time. I'm just being quiet here while obviously I'll work around uh, some of the trickier parts there. But I think we're getting them. Okay, folks, well, that's the end of step two of the Moore Method of Painting. So we've done step one, our drawing. Now we've done step two, our blocking. As you can see, it's coming along quite nicely. And it's a good idea to go and have a cup of tea or go for lunch. Give it a half an hour to an hour and the water will evaporate out of this oil paint. It'll still be wet oil paint, okay? Um, even though it's water mixable, it still will stay wet. And, uh, but it'll go a little bit tacky. So we can then come back in and work on uh, the rest of the painting over the top of that. So let's have a break and I'll see you after the break for step three of the Moore Method of Painting. Cheers for now. Okay, folks, welcome back to part two now of our project here today. And uh, let this dry off. It's still fairly wet, but some of the moisture of the water has dried out of it now. And uh, we're good to go for our step number three. Now, step number three is, of course, our details, our highlights, finishing touches, and so on. This is where we slow down a little bit, take a bit more time, and really start to develop this up into a, um, you know, into a finished painting. And what I'll do now, this shadow tone for those trees up in here, that's pretty dry. The, the water in here is still quite thick, so it's still wet, but the shadow tone up there for the trees is quite dry. So we're going to bring the light source coming in this way, it's sort of coming from behind those trees here, which means that we want to have our mid-tones and highlights more centered around this side, to the right-hand side there. Okay, so we just tap them in just lightly and we create little rounded sort of shapes in our trees there. Don't lose all of your darks. And I know I say that every, every episode pretty much, but it, there's a reason why I say that every episode is because it's one of the biggest mistakes that I... Um, see that beginners make and if you can just keep those darks in there the trees will start to look just that little bit more realistic why because every object or element needs to have a mid-tone a dark and a highlight or a light unless it's completely in shadow okay so we see we're starting to get a little bit of a form happening for this tree here now we'll just cover up some of those tree holes that's also darkened it a little as well but not to worry so this is not the focal point the trees here as long as the viewer goes oh, okay they're trees I don't maybe not articulate that but they they'll certainly think it and they'll make unconscious assessments about what they're viewing. Okay, just watch out in that sky there, it's getting lighter in value. Did you see I shifted it a little bit warmer just in here, just to create a bit of variety. Um, but now I'm going to push it back to our blue. A little. Okay. And I'm just using just the tip of that brush and I'm just doing really light little strokes. There's plenty of that dark coming through there. Okay, that's good. Now, the ones out the back there, they're going to be lighter in value. So there's our white to lighten them off. And there's our blue to cool it, push it further off into the distance. Let's have a check here. Mm, maybe not enough. Let's try that tone. That's pretty close in value now to that lower part of the sky. It's definitely, definitely um, lighter in value than these trees here. And that's what we want. We want to make sure that the, 
They're sitting out the back there. This is Molly, our little studio cat. She's not very happy about being picked up, um, but she's helping me in the studio today. Actually being mischievous. Come on, doll, we'll go out. Into that yellow, into that green mix there, okay? And then we can just come now and just separate the tops of this tree. from the background water there. Now I can make that even stronger. I could lighten the value just slightly. See that? When I lighten that value against the darker value of the water, it, uh... So at the back of the two boats, the, the part that's facing us, they're in shadow, right? It's all in shadow. So that's our first step is to get that into shadow. We've got a white boat in shadow, and then we've got a yellow boat in shadow. So that makes for an interesting little combination. Um, our white boat in shadow will start with white, surprisingly. Okay, so let's get some white right there. And then we'll mix up a blue and a red into that. Now, I think that shadow probably wants to be more on the blue side. Okay, and it needs to be lighter in value than that, I think. More on the blue side again. Okay, probably something like that. Let us have a look. Time to really concentrate now and slow down. Just using a little small, medium to small brush here. And that section in there is all in shadow as well. So we can connect those two shadows there. And that kind of means that this reflection's in shadow. It's a little bit on the brown side, but let's just have a look. Uh, it's definitely in there as well, a bit around there, like so. Now the white part of that boat is a little bit deceptive. If I paint it bright white, well, let's have a look and see what will happen if I paint it bright white. I'll just give my brush a clean. Let's take some of that pure white. Maybe pure white's right, maybe it's not. Tiniest little bit grey for the reflection. A couple of dark marks. So one. This is sort of technical boat stuff, which I don't understand. But I'll pop a few little details in there like that. There's a little detail in there probably another one there just a couple of little marks like that that's good but we've lost the yellowness out of it so put a little bit more yellow cadmium yellow back into it that's probably about it there i'd say let me come back to here so we don't miss the shot again 
sorry about that okay so this is really more of a mustardy yellow color it's meant to be and then it needs to be muted back again from that for the reflection Fun part now, we've got this bright yellow. Okay, mix that there. And that's going to got a little bit too much green in my brush, which is pushing it all green. Perhaps if I just take some bright yellow, it's better, isn't it? A little dash of that there. And then it shifts back to the darker tone underneath there, like so. And then the reflection is, yeah, the reflection's bright, but it's still a bit more muted than the brightest version of it there. So we'll just run that in like so. Okay, now I can take a smaller brush and over that green, we'll just run some of this light blue. Maybe a touch more white in it. So as the water blows against this, sorry, as the wind blows against this water, it's going to create little ripples and those ripples stand up and reflect the sky. Well, marked up that part. That needs slightly darker the blue in there, I feel. Take a chunk of that white. I've got that yellow ochre there. Let's get into that. Okay, we'll take a little bit of just grey something. Just to mute it back so it's not too punchy. Okay. I'm doing that because it's over in the distance here. And just run that along the embankment there. And maybe a little touch just out on the edge there. Okay, now we need a dark version of that. So we need to get a red and the yellow ochre. Okay, that's too warm. So we'll cool it. Okay, now it needs to be more yellow ochre-y. Push that up. That's better. And there's going to be sort of in shadow in a few places there that's not catching that bit of light. So I'm just mixing up a warm yellow, need a touch of blue in there. Okay. Don't want to highlight everywhere. Otherwise the effect of the highlight is diminished. That's probably, I'm a bit concerned that's a bit strong. So I'll take some of this mid-tone, this slightly less punchy green. And all of this is just done with the gentlest little touch. 
because I want subtle soft effects, don't I? That's, that's where we're going with this, subtle and soft. Subtle's not really in my personality, so I've had to really learn restraint when it comes to um, adding these sort of little touches in. So for that purpose, I'm going to take my little script liner brush there, okay? And I want yellow ochre and uh, lizard and crimson. Which basically, will make us up a um, kind of a burnt sienna. Okay, and just in the sand here, just want to get a few little dots and dashes in there. Maybe a little bit of a tree trunk effect here and there. That probably needs to be a touch lighter in value. Let's just get that there. So just blue and red predominantly. I'm mixing it over there, top of other tones there. So it's going to uh, perhaps just shift in tone a little bit. That's okay. Now I just need run that through there. Run that there. So this is obviously where we need to concentrate more. Got a little bit of something there. fairly runny, right? So I've got a fair bit of water in there and I really want that just on the tip of that little brush. And come back here and I'm going to use a piece of MDF board here. I need to place it in just the right place and it's probably going to block your view, but what I'm going to do is just hold it against there and run my rigger brush down like so. This time though, I've got to place the board correctly okay so a little bit of light on that side of it and look there's a few other little subtle lines and things in there I could just You in like that that's probably all it needs really isn't it it's turned out not a bad little painting has it what else do we want to do I, I think we'll just leave it there i think we've got the basics in the bare bones of it it's working well there you go folks our little boats on noosa river done in water mixable oils but the exact same process will work for acrylics and you know basically we're just thinning the paint down with water and we're going to use exactly the same process so it doesn't matter what medium acrylic or water mixable oil and uh, it's come up not a bad little painting um, again you know you could detail it up more there's more work you could do but I want to demonstrate to you the basic approach of building up a painting and uh, I think we've done that today it's a good little project it's a little bit tricky around the boat so it's going to challenge some of you uh, but take your time and perhaps just get your sketchbook out and just sketch out the little boats a few times using the photo reference and um, that'll help you when it comes time to to do the painting. The masks are a little bit tricky, obviously, so experiment with different techniques on how you can uh, get a straight line in there for those, and that'll certainly help. Um, I've enjoyed it. It's been a fun project. I hope you've enjoyed it as well. Now, make sure you check out every episode of Learn to Paint TV. I'll put the web address underneath me here, and also, uh, for a free course, 
just go to this web address here. At the Learn to Paint Academy, we give away a free, complete course with three or four demonstrations and a deeper explanation of the Moore method of painting. So you want to go and register for that. It's on the screen there now, www.learntopaint.info. Go there, register for a free course, and uh, learn more about the Moore method of painting, which we've already taught to 25,000 people. And uh, this is obviously another one of our little projects that we're teaching beginners and intermediate artists how to really enjoy their painting and get great results. Hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of Learn to Paint TV and I will see you next week. Happy painting. Cheers.